Hello, my name's Rob and welcome to Swift Slots. So my main slot car interest really is rally car racing. Now within rally car racing, we have a, a quite a comprehensive set of rules and those rules apply to different years of manufacture of rally car, the real ones, not the model ones. So in classic class, which is up to 1980, I race my team slot Renault A310, which is a maximum width limit of 58 mil. And in 80s, 90s class, as the two decades are classed as one class, I run my advanced slot Ferrari 308, I run my SRC S4, and I run my Ninko 037. Now the width classes for these are 60 millimeters. And in modern class, which is 2000 and beyond or newer, I run my NSR 997. And I know Nick, it's not a rally car. But the class for this one is 62 millimeters. So it's 58 millimeters for classic, 60 millimeters for 80s, 90s, and 62 millimeters for modern. And there's the problem. It's the width limitation. There are millions of slot cars out there that are rally cars. No problem with that at all. But obviously to get the most out of racing, you need to go right up to the rules to really get the most out of it because other people will as well. So there's no point in holding back on one aspect of the rule because you're really fighting with one arm behind your back. So the width rule is the thing that really holds back rally cars and it's the thing that defines the best rally cars from everything else. So that's the problem, it's the width. So there are very few slot car rally cars that go right up to that width limit to give you the maximum stability. And that's the point of this video. It's trying to find a car or trying to create a car that's not up to the maximum width limit, but can still go like an absolute rocket and hopefully level peg with some of the best slot rally slot cars that you can get up to their maximum weight uh, width limit. So that's the video today is I'm going to take this very, very nice fly Renault Turbo 5 body that's very, very much narrower than the maximum width limit. And I'm going to try and get this body onto a chassis and get it to perform as well as my full width classed cars. Now, I've got to give a shout out to the guy on slot form who gave me this. He's here. A great thank you to him because he actually gave me this body shell for this project. So I'm very, very appreciative of that. So thank you very much. So the way I'm going to achieve getting this car to perform really, really well, even though it's under width for its class, which is the 80s, 90s class, I'm going to be using this. Now, this is a pre-made chassis made by Slotit and it's called an HRS chassis. You can get it in angle winder and in line. I don't know about other ones, but that's certainly those two and it's completely adjustable. So that's the plan. I'm going to try and get this HRS chassis, inline chassis, because that's another rule of rally, it has to be inline, into this Renault Turbo 5 body and see if I can create something that's very, very competitive, as competitive as the 60 mil class 80s, 90s, albeit this is probably going to end up being somewhere around 55 mil, 56 mil, so very much narrower, but hopefully, perform equally as well. So I'm going to get you on my bench, I'm going to show you all the parts that I bought to do this project and then I'm going to hit the bench and create it. Okay so let's take a close look at my Fly Renault Turbo 5 body. Now the reason why I chose this body was because it's incredibly light, with very very thin A, B and C pillars and a very small roof which means there's not a lot of weight above the top of the door to throw around. Some cars have quite a large roof, this one doesn't. So that's the reason why I chose it. The other thing that's great about this car is when it was supplied to me, it was supplied to me exactly the same as this with no glass, no running gear, no nothing. And that's exactly what I wanted because I don't want any of that stuff anyway. So the actual total width uh, weight of this body is only 11 grams. So we're already starting with a very light body and I intend to thin out the roof so it's thinner and lighter and also some of the rest of the body to make the body even lighter. Not to make the car light because a car is still going to end up being about 75 to 80 grams. But it's to take away the weight above or to lower the centre of gravity then. So let's take a closer look at the HRS chassis. Now these are very nice chassis but I have been told with good authority that they don't make great rally car chassis. 
but I never one to be told no. I'm going to try that theory out. So it, within the kit, you get these wheel centers. Now I won't be using these wheel centers because they're not particularly rally inspired. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using these team slot five spoke inserts. Now these are a little bit big anyway, so I'm going to have to pop these in the lathe and turn them down so they'll fit inside the wheels here. Now you can do that with a hand file as well, but I'm going to use the lathe because I've got one. So these are the inserts that I'm going to use. They're a little bit more rally-esque. So there are the inserts. Now back to the chassis. As you can see, this crossbar here slides up and down these rails and gives you infinite adjustment within its maximum and minimum width. Also in the packet, you get all of these components. Now a bewildering pile of parts, I know but you get a second guide holder, which is actually very slightly wider than the one that comes on the car. So there's a wider version of that. And if you need the guide to be in a different position from the axle, not in this fixed con configuration, you have these extra guide uh, front axle holders, which are independent of the, the main holder. So you can bolt this one up where you want the guide and then put your other axle holder in a different position and it goes over or behind the main guide holder and those you've got several widths of as you can see here there's three different widths of those now I will be using one of these because I need to bring my guide right back so I'm going to have to use one of these probably the narrowest one in conjunction with the guide holder and it's probably going to end up having to be something along those lines there to actually make sure that I can get my guide and front axle within the confines of the body. The rest of these parts here are things to do with body mounting. Now, this car comes with a motor. Now, that motor is way too fast for rallying. We really don't, even, even a 21,000 RPM um, motor is a little bit quick for rally, really. You want something a little bit slower, a little bit tamer. So, getting an 18,000 RPM short cam motor can be a little bit tricky because uh, there's not that many of them there and they're all out of stock sometimes. And there's not a lot of choice of, of decent motors. Now, when I did my Fly Capri conversion into something a bit more usable, I had a spare, really good quality short can motor. And my beautiful Pioneer Mustang had an 18,000 RPM motor in it. The Pioneer Typhoon 18,000. And it says 18,000 on the can. So this is a known 18,000 RPM motor. Now there are other motors out there that are also 18,000 or there are thereabouts, but some of them are hard to get and some of them, who knows. But this says 18,000, so I'm going to take it as read that it's an 18,000. I know 18,000 works quite well with rally cars, so that's what I want. So I put the fly motor into this lovely Pioneer Mustang, because this is just a play car for me anyway. So that now drives very nicely with that motor, it doesn't mind. And I've now got myself a spare 18,000 motor. So I can take this 24,000 out and I can replace it with an actual, or at least claims to be, 18,000 RPM motor. So that gets my motor sorted out. These, these uh, HRS chassis already come with a 9-tooth brass pinion and a 28-tooth rear crown gear. So that's absolutely perfect. They're also equipped with a pod. Now pods come in different types. This is particular one is a minus 0.5 mil, which means... The motor is now half a millimeter below the center line of the axle. Now that actually is a good thing because it lowers your center of gravity. And also with 0.5 offset, you don't actually need different gears. If you go 0.1 offset, so one mil offset, you do need a different type of gear. Otherwise they tend to eat themselves. But a 0.5, you can use standard gears. That's really great. So using standard gears and it's slightly lower down which is really awesome. And obviously this is set up on a short cam motor. So there we are. So the other thing these come with is aluminium wheels on the rear and plastics on the front. Now I'm sure these plastics are perfectly good, but I want aluminiums all round. So I've got some staffs. Now, the other thing with these chassis is the 15.8 mil is the smallest wheel you're allowed to run with rally slot cars. Now these are 15.8 by eight mil wide, front and rear. Now, 8 mil is usually great for front wheels, but not so great for rear wheels because you want maximum width for maximum grip. So what I've done is I've got some these staffs 15 by 10s. 
So these 15 by 10 wheels are going on the back and then these 15 by 8 wheels are going on the front. However, there's a twist. I don't think that I can get 8mm wide wheels on the front of this car under this body shell. So I'm going to have to modify these, these alloy wheels in their width to slim them right down and then cut the tyres so that I can get everything underneath the front of this car because it's just going to be too wide. So that's all the chassis sorted out. On the chassis I should be fitting my favourite slotting plus guide because I find these to be extremely good and I should also be adding suspension to this chassis. Now the way I'm going to achieve that is I've got these slotting plus brass suspension screws, they're generic with the little caps and a set of slot it medium springs. So the way this will work is you slacken off the two screws there, you drill out the holes in the back of this pod so that they're smooth and straight the way through and the same on the bottom. You insert these brass screws into the back, put a spring on it and put the cap on it and leave these ones, you adjust them up so that you get a little bit of movement there. Now I found that having suspension on rally cars really is a game changer. A lot of people have rattle bodies so they all float or you can adjust the pods to let the pod float but I've actually found that having proper suspension on these cars really is a cut above the rest. So I want to try and get suspension on this as well. Also I should be changing these tyres to some different stickier tyres that I like to use for rally. They're the G25 tyres from Slot It as well. They seem to work very well. So these, these rear tyres will go on the front and the G25s will go on the rear, but that's just a personal thing. And the last thing I need to do to this body shell before I can turn it into a working car is obviously put some glass in it and an interior. Now the glass is going to be made out of this very thin piece of scrap, I guess you call it Lexan I suppose, but it's just clear plastic, very thin, it's very very light, so we'll be making up a template and putting this in the car to use as the glass. And obviously then we need, we, we need an interior. And for that, I've got this Avant Slot Renault A310 interior in vacuum form plastic. Again, to lower the center of gravity. Now in rally racing, we need two drivers. So this is perfect, it's got two drivers. Because it's from a classic car, it's got a very thin dashboard, which is great. It's also got an exposed rear engine, which is also brilliant. So this will fit into the chassis, into the body, sorry. And you can see that it'll give me a very nice looking front end with the two drivers. And on the rear end, you've got this very nice molded engine. And it happens to fit beautifully in the back of this car, looking like that. So we've got a nice bit of engine detail. Now obviously, I'm going to need to trim a piece out the middle and join them together to get them to fit into the body. But by the time that's done, this will be a very nice interior and I may actually put a couple of mock bars, just vertical bars out of some one millimeter rod, plastic rod, just to imply a roll cage. It won't go all over the top because I'm trying to get the weight right the way down. So I don't want to add weight. So there may be two bars here going up and stopping, two here and then a couple at the back just to give the illusion of a roll cage. So. Let's get on the bench and see what we can create from this pile of parts. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get rid of all these wires and we may as well take that motor out at the same time because I simply don't need it. Okay, with the motor and wires all removed, I can now change the front guide to my slotting plus guide. Now I can get my slotting plus guide in there. And there we are. Actually, that's a really, really, really good fit in there. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, so next I'm going to fit one of my Revo slot guide springs into the guide. And then we're going to mount it back into the chassis. And get it all screwed up. And there we are. We've now got a very nice sprung guide ready to go. So the next job is to line up the chassis in the back of the body, get the wheels nicely lined up and just see where we need to place this guide holder. So 
So there we are. So the internals of that guide just miss the front of that spoiler. Yeah, that's really, really close. Right, so now I've established the length of my chassis. I now need to trim the front of the chassis down. This is something that I didn't really want to do, but I'd also don't want to be chomping holes in the front of the body either. And to be honest with you, you can buy replacements of these chassis on their own anyway. So if I ever wanted to replace it back for standard, I could. So that's what I'll do. I'll chop the front of these down now. It's just on the end where the holes go there. That's where it needs to go. We'll get those off and then we'll come back to it again. And there we are. So that's the back wheel centered with the front of the chassis just touching the front bumper. And I might leave it like that for now, just so that I've got reference, because I'm now putting a very small amount of pressure forwards and it's just touching the front of the body there. And it's perfect in the rear arch. So that's quite good for reference. And the guide is just missing, but I can always move the guide back half a millimeter at the end if I want a little bit of clearance. So now I've done this, now I need to get my front beam in to hold my front axle and sort out the front end. So let's get one of these shortest ones out, pop it in there, get it all centered up, and then we'll get back to it again. Okay, so now we've got the wheelbase pretty well exact and we've cut the chassis down to fit inside the body in theory. The HRS chassis comes with an adjustable front axle height. So they supply you with these little tiny grub screws on a 0.9 mil Allen key. So we'll just pop these in now in readiness for later on when we come to set up the rest of the car. We are right so we can adjust those screws up later on to get the exact height so next I need to try and make sure that all these wheels and tires all fit inside the body now obviously we're changing the back wheels to 10 mil and we've got a little bit of room here to come in board so they're okay but these front wheels are massively too wide now the next problem with the rally rules is you can't have wheels or tires that extend past the bodywork so we have to get these flush so these are eight mil wide. They need to come down to maybe even six mil. I'm not entirely sure yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these aluminum wheels off the back and I'm gonna pop them on the lathe and I'm going to reduce them in width and also the shoulder so that we can actually get a set of trimmed tires and these wheels on the front so that we can get the whole thing inside the body. So let's crack on and do that now. So what we've got here is we've got the closest I can get these front wheels. There's basically no play side to side. There's no end float, but the wheels are still free to turn. Now I was hoping to be able to trim a little bit off the back of the wheel or even a little bit off the inside of this axle holder, but there's just no meat in there to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out how much too wide these wheels are, and I'm gonna take it off the face of the wheel and obviously the, that will move the face of the wheel in and I'll have to move the rebate that the tire sits into, this lip here, that's gonna have to move over accordingly. And then the excess tire that ends up coming this way, I'll just chop it off completely. So I've taken off 100 thou off of both sides and brought the rebate in accordingly. And this side is just tucked inside the wheel arch. And this side is just a fraction outside of the wheel arch. We're just, just, just on the wheel arch itself. It's not inside the body. So I'm really, really close. So I reckon if I take off another 
20 thou per side that will bring it in about a millimeter overall which will just bring these wheels just inside the body and that'll be absolutely fine then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make up a sleeve and i'm going to put a sleeve on the inside of these wheels to bring this inside rim all the way over to the edge so that the tires can be on this wheel completely so let's get on with making that Okay, so that was quite a lot more messing about than I'd originally thought I was going to have to do to it. So the original idea was to hang the original tyres off the inside bead, let the inside of the tyre hang off the inside of the rim and just chop off the excess. But having gone through my spares, I found these Carrera Go on 43rd scale tyres. And it just so happens to be that they have a nice inner rib like that it was almost identical to the wheel that I'd created. So I decided to use Carrera Go tyres and they fit absolutely brilliantly. I will show you. And there you go. So we got Carrera Go tyres on these wheels and these wheels have ended up being about 6.7 mil wide. So We'll get these tyres all mounted up on these rims, get this axle back into the car, and then I can work out how long my axle's got to be, and then chop off the excess on the axle. And there you go. Axle's all cut down, wheels all in place. Nothing's done up tight just for the second, but the axle all fits in there nicely. And it should, in theory, hopefully, it does, fit inside the body, just about. Really tight, but that's what we want, we want maximum width. So there we are. So, that gets us the front end done. Now we've just got to put on our tyres onto our Staffs wheels. And then we can get the back wheels mounted as well and see how the land lies. And there it all is. It's all in place. It's actually going to work, amazingly. So there we are. So this is where we're at now. So what we need to do now is get all these tires and wheels all bedded in, locked up on their axles and centered on the chassis so that they're not floating around. Then I can get my new motor back in and get the pinion replaced on it. Then we can start thinking about getting this chassis mounted to the body. So let's get these wheels and tires all mounted on properly and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so while these tires are drying with their nail varnish, let's get rid of this uh, magnet because we don't want that. And let's get the motor all swapped over and into the car. Okay, so another problem that I've just encountered is this Typhoon motor shaft isn't as long as the slotted motor shaft, so the shaft doesn't engage into this crown gear. So what I'm gonna to have to do is make a little spacer which goes inside this plastic housing and butts up against the bearing 
so that this Matus axle spacer here can sit in this gap and allow the gear to be meshed properly into the motor by controlling the backlash. And then when this new wheel goes back on, I shall have to make up a spacer on this side so that that also shares some of the sideways load. Then I can use this shorter shaft and it'll all be fine. So let's make a little spacer to go in there for now and then we can move on. Okay, so here is the little collar that I've just made. And the way this works is it goes inside this bearing housing here. There's a nice fit, so it's not actually touching the plastic. And then this axle stopper then goes in there like that. And then we can do up crown gear like that and then control the end float using this axle stopper here so we can push the two parts away from each other and then just nip up the axle stopper and now that's 100% perfect there's no movement in that at all that's a little bit tight at the moment so all we need to do is back off this axle stopper move it a hair and there you go, you got, well that's too much now, but somewhere in the middle of that, when I do the final setup, that can get absolutely perfect. So, that's that problem solved. Now, let's move on to the next. Okay, so this is where we're at, at this particular point. Getting pretty close. Got everything fitting in. Chassis sitting nice and deep in the body. And everything is just about where it should be. So there is the little spacer that I've just made, sitting right inside this bearing block, but not touching the plastic at all. There's a tiny little gap there between the axle stopper and the gear. There is no side play in that gear worth talking about. There's just a lovely small amount of backlash and that axle is nice and free to turn. And as you saw, the chassis is actually mounted to, or well, the chassis is within the body, and I'm getting minute amounts of clearance that I can fettle and work with later on in the build. So we're very, very, very close now. So what I'd like to do now is convert this back end to get the suspension in. And then I've noticed that because I've used 43rd scale front tires, I've got a little bit of... Uh, ground clearance issue here. The wheel is just missing the ground. It does it does touch if I push, but it's just a little bit high. And the reason why is because I put the spring in this guide. So what I'm gonna do is take the guide off as well, file away about a millimeter of material underneath the guide mount there, just so the spring's got something to sink up into. Because if it's missing by sort of 10 or 20 thou now, by the time it's got its braids on, even though it's gonna have 20 thou racing braids it's still going to lift it up another fraction so taking about a millimeter off of here just help to sink the guide up and give me a little bit more clearance later on I can always shim it back down again it's very difficult if it's high so let's get this suspension on now so the way I'm going to do that is we undo these screws Then what we need to do is we need to measure the diameter of this thread. As you can see, a two mil hole will be absolutely perfect. So we're gonna drill this whole thing through two mil. And then once you've done that, check to make sure it's a nice easy fit 
and it is a nice easy fit. I'll both go in there, and there we are. So trying to fall, it's trying to fall apart. It's such an easy fit. So once you've got that done, you need to get your springs on. So let's grab some springs. You can actually adjust the height of these caps and give yourself some adjustment and you could always put a locking nut on the top of these threads or you could uh, put a bit of thread lock on if you know your height. Probably a locking nut is probably best. And then you've got suspension nut. There you are. And that's really, really nice suspension there. And we can adjust the tension just by cranking down these screws, holding the collars, just keep them roughly the same. And there we are, we can adjust perfectly. That's really nice, really, really smooth that is. So there we are. And if you pop it on the setup block, you can see that we've got suspension. As simple as that. So, let's get the front end off now, give a bit of clearance to this guide spring, and then we can move on to the next stage. And there you are, I've now got Good contact with the front tyres, ready for the braids to go in. Now I may need to take a little bit more off at some point, but that is pretty close. That's good enough for now. Yeah, I think probably a little bit more do what need to come off when the braids go on, but that can be done. I'll take the front end off and I'll file it all square and just get it right. But there we are. So we've got that and there's the suspension working on the back. So, next job I think is to make the wheels look pretty and put the inserts in. Okay, I'm going to stop the video right here because this was only ever supposed to be a one day build in my mind and we're a little bit beyond that now and before I finish the whole video I'm already at 45 minutes and I've still got a little way to go. So it's going to get a little bit long so I'm going to cut it here at the 30 minute mark and we'll pick it up in part two where we will indeed finish the car and get it on the track. So, if you've enjoyed this content so far, maybe you'll subscribe. And if you hit the little bell button, that would be awesome. So until the next time, thank you very much.